Should you buy an assignment? Should you buy a pre-construction condo? What's better, buy an assignment or buy a pre-construction condo? Um, 2019, 2020, almost here. Price of condos up to 1,400 a foot. Pre-construction, I, yesterday I talked to you about this. It's crazy prices, 1,000 square feet, 1.4 million dollars, 500 square feet, $700,000, 25, 750, very high prices. You need crazy rents to uh, make up for it or put huge deposits. That's obviously a problem. Um, so let's look at assignments. Okay, what's assignment? Uh, quick review. Let's say I bought a condo from a developer c- uh, three years ago and I paid $700 a foot and I pay a thousand. Uh, there's a thousand square feet in a condo. So I, uh, I will pay $700,000, 700 to myself. Okay. So seven hundred thousand dollars, fifteen percent down, plus five percent on occupancy, about one hundred five hundred five thousand for the deposit. Another five percent of seven hundred thirty-five thousand on occupancy, and that's my twenty percent. Okay, one forty, one hundred five plus thirty-five. Okay, great. Uh, Now let's say I want to flip that condo to someone else, and I want to flip it just to make it easy for eight hundred dollar foot. So I'm going to make a hundred dollar foot profit or margin. So $100 a foot times uh, 1,000 square feet, that's $100,000. So my profit, my gross profit before, you know, I paid the real estate agent, the OC, and before I paid the taxes, whatever, or lawyer is going to be $100,000. Very, very good. Compa- so you're basically doubling gross, gross profit of double your investment, 105, get 100, that's almost double your investment in a couple of years. Not much done, just sign a bunch of papers. Pretty good, huh? Can't do it anywhere else. But here's the problem. The problem is, if I wanted to buy a new condo now at 1400 foot, it's not going to make any sense. So from the buyer perspective, I, I'm thinking to myself, maybe I can find a cheap assignment, uh, cheaper dollar per foot, because somebody bought it uh, years ago, and now they're going to offload it or unload it to me, and I can basically save some money. How does that work? They paid $700 a foot, like I paid $700 a foot for the developer, okay? But now the prices say 1000 a foot, they went up by 30%. So I'll, I'll tell the, the person who's buying from you, know, take this assignment off my hands. I only want 800 foot, I only want 900 foot. Um, and then I sell it to you a little bit below uh, market price, which is the right price for assignments. I, I did a video how to price your assignments. It's all in there. Um, and that's it, you know, I take my money out. I don't have to close, no uh, mortgage, no headache, put some profit in my pocket. And it's good, and the other person's really happy because they got a good condo and they don't have to pay full market value for it. They pay less. So great, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, it is great, but there's some issues that I need to tell you about. So it goes like this. When you buy an assignment, okay, when you buy the assignment, or when you sell an assignment, let's start from the buyer perspective for a second. When you buy an assignment, um, there's three things you need to look at pricing-wise. The first one is the deposit paid so far. So, you know, the person paid, say, 15% of the 700, paid 105. So you got, you got to reimburse them for that. Uh, then you gotta you gotta remember that the developer there's maybe more to pay say on occupancy five percent thirty five thousand dollars you gotta have, make sure you have that money, and then there's the profit or the margin the difference between what they paid what they sell to you so they bought from the developer at seven hundred thousand but they sell to you at eight hundred thousand that's a hundred thousand dollars so you got you gotta have the one hundred five the thirty five and the one hundred that's two forty total so two hundred forty thousand out of eight hundred thousand now you're looking at. Uh, what is it? Almost, almost. Uh, it's well over uh, 20%, 25%, 30%. So, what happens with the assignments? And you see, typical assignments, they actually need cash of 30 to 40% of the value of the assignment. Now, that's really high, and most people don't do that. You know, if I had $300,000 in my pocket, I want to leverage it more. So, if I have $300,000 in my pocket, I'm not going to look for $800,000 unit. I'm going to look for a million-dollar unit because I can leverage that money and make more. Okay? So that's what the assignment sellers forget. I think about assignment sellers, a lot of them are not from Toronto, a lot of them bought and they came from China. China, everyone knows now, is a big problem. Uh, I don't know, you know, I'm, I'm not an expert, but I can tell you there's like the mess in Hong Kong and China is going all kinds of uh, places and, uh, you know, they, they, they have their own way of doing things, but it may not jive with our economy. So if anything happens with the Chinese economy, and apparently that's what people say, Again, I'm, I'm, no, you know, I'm no expert on China, but the Chinese economy is actually not doing that great. There's so much they can hide it. And then it's going to trickle down to the little people who are the investor buyers. So what's going to happen to all these people that bought condos on assignment, imagining they're going to have more money coming from China to close in condos? They're going to have to sell. They're going to have to sell. The Chinese, the foreign national Chinese that bought in Toronto, they may have to sell because they can't, they can't pay for it because the value of the investment in China is dropping 
or maybe the China government giving them a hard time, get the money out, or the value of the currency is dropping, all these things. And I'm pretty sure, you know, we're going to see some of that coming up uh, this year in 2020. So it's a good opportunity in one, one end. But the other problem is that you, a, lot of, uh, a lot of Asian buyers asking for crazy prices. When I say crazy prices, it's not realistic for the market. Now, it could be a cultural thing. It could be that they get bad advice. It could be the agent sold them the listing. Selling the listing means I come to an agent and say, you know, I'll sell your house, no problem. What do you want, a million dollars? I'll get you a million one. You want two million? I'll get you three million. You know, I sell the listing. I basically they just give you unrealistic expectations of what you can get for this property. And you put the price up and of course you don't get any calls and then you stuck with it and then it becomes a fire sale. That happens more than you think. So these are really good, uh, these are really good uh, to take over, but you need crazy amount of cash. And I don't see the risk so high because, you know, when you go with a, with a reasonable developer, reputable developer, large building, building's already near completion. It's not the building's not going to complete it. It's not, not going to be registered. It's pretty safe. I've done many, many assignments. There's hundreds of them happen every month in Toronto. So I'm not afraid it's not going to close. Uh, my fear is... Uh, number one, can I get a really good deal as a buyer? Number two, do I have enough cash? Number three, can I negotiate a reasonable deal with the seller? Okay, so the seller, a lot of sellers, especially the Asians coming from China, they're like, yeah, I want all the, all, all the deposit and the profit up front. Now, that's not going to happen, especially when the buyers are also from China. If the sellers, you know, think about it. If the sellers in Toronto are from China and the buyers are also from China, they're all drinking from the same well. That means that when the China economy coming down, or getting wonky or they start getting a little scared you know what's going to happen what's going to happen it's like you know hong kong riots and all that stuff so what's going to happen you know I, I better just sell get my money out of china get my money other things put it in another place transfer it to another currency whatever it is you know they all have their own methods to secure their funds of course everyone has their own ideas um, but the thing is the seller may be stressed to sell but they gave an unrealistic uh price so that could become a fire sale and never sell at all. Um, a lot of Asian sellers using Asian uh, agents here and their communication uh, methods or the social uh, surroundings, those who are literally from China, not those who grew up here, it doesn't matter really, um, could be incompatible. So there's a lot of language barriers, uh, uh, social barriers to do these deals. And I see this every day. Uh, people tell me stuff and go, what are you talking about? And, I really got to pick up the phone and call them and ask them specifically like what's going on because I do want to make sure <laughs> sometimes you know I like I get a message and it's completely not like I read the English and it's just just not what it means so you got to watch for these things too it's like it sounds simple but it's not it's real uh, and of course the, the price difference in the cash so when you come to buy assignments uh, should you buy an assignment should you buy a new development look when you buy pre-construction yeah it's only the 15 percent so it's cheaper in a way it's less cash up front but the risk is getting too high when you're looking at a $1,400 foot. Okay, I want to buy an assignment. Maybe I can pick up the assignment equivalent for a thousand bucks a foot, but I need to have a lot more cash, usually 30 or 40% of the price I'm paying, right? Because I'm paying, I need to have 20% for uh, the original price plus the difference. So if, if, uh, if it was a $700,000 unit, I need 140 and say they sold it for me for 750. That's another one. That's, 290,000 plus closing costs, da, da, da. that's well over $300,000, that's, that's you know, 40% of the unit. That's a lot of money. And if I have that money, I'm probably going to leverage to buy a million dollar property elsewhere. So the seller of the assignments uh, are unreasonable. Many of them are unreasonable. I see crazy prices, but it doesn't mean we can't bid on it. Usually I pick up the phone, I call, say, hey, like, you know, is, is this seller, is this seller uh, local? And today I did that and said, no, they're in China. Okay, so they're on the 35% program. Yes, they are. Okay, great. So, so they're not really aware of, of the prices in Toronto, the conditions are no. They're, they have been to Toronto? No. Okay, so that's cool. So um, the question is, how did they come up with this asking price? Was this because they read it somewhere, because they got ill advice, because the agent sold it to them and just promised them a price that they, they, they know they can't deliver, but they just want the listing because they got the calls and then they can sell them something else. You know, there's all these things. So you got to watch out. Um, also, uh, today, and on MLS, no, no, no less, I saw uh, the exact same unit at the exact same address twice on MLS with two different sellers and two different prices and two different everything. So obviously, there's a mistake, there's an error, whether it's done on purpose or not, I don't know. But there's an error showing the same unit number, same address, 
to list twice. Actually, one of them is show sole condition, one is in the new. They don't even have the right price. Clearly, it is it, assuming it's an honest mistake. It's just not the same unit, and somebody made a mistake of the, it is in the same building, so somebody made a mistake in the unit number or in the address. So I let one of the agents know, and I'm trying to leave it at that, see if they do anything about it. But that's another risk with the assignment is you really got to like check what you're buying because and, and that, that's not that difficult to do because, you know, it goes through the lawyer and then it goes through the company, through the developer. So obviously the developer is not going to assign a unit that somebody didn't buy. But you may find on MLS, I mean, you don't know, you can find on MLS an, an assignment, quote unquote, but it doesn't really exist. So uh, rare, I haven't seen this, but it, it, is, it, it is possible by error, like I saw today. I'm sure it was by error. I don't think anyone done anything on purpose there. Uh, you know, just didn't pay attention, typo, just a typo, that's all it takes. You press three instead of four and you get a double listing, you know. Um, but, you know, the, so the greatest thing about buying the assignment, the greatest risk is, of course, the upfront cash. So the last few years, things are going so crazy, you know, they say, give me the profit and deposit right away. Most people don't have three and four hundred thousand dollars lying around. They'll have one or two hundred thousand. So now we say, you know, we'll we'll do it like we used to do it back 10, 12 years ago. Assignment when I was the only one in town who's doing assignments, and the market was not uh, so Asian based. Um, and what we did, we said, look, this is the deposit you had. We'll give you back the deposit. Here's another uh, enough money to cover the realtor's fee and some more. Say another fifty thousand dollars, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars depending on the amount. Don't forget, in the old days, 10 years ago, the prices were way lower, like less than half than what it is today. Um, and, and the rest will do on, on, uh, on closing. Now, the, uh, the seller of the assignment and, and the lawyer can say, oh, well, that's too risky. What if you don't pay me? Well, that's why we do it with the developer. That's why we have to show you a pre-approval from the bank. And basically, we sell the buyer of the assignment to the bank or to me as a mortgage broker to bring us a letter uh, saying yes we pre-approved them we ran their numbers and they're good for it okay now when it comes uh, signed by a mortgage broker you know the the work has been done so it's safe for the assignment seller to do this um, and there's uh, there's obviously other, other legal things but we're here in the business of transacting not in the business of you know trying to grab things that are not ours so it's all said and done when we're doing the, the things the way we should do uh, assignments go well, but they need a lot of cash up front, and that's a big problem. Uh, and because they need the cash up front, of course, you need to close on and use mortgage. I think you're going to start seeing a lot of uh, opportunities in assignment where sellers are going to start to soften their stance. Uh, those who do it first will sell first, and then you will see. And then it's a snowball. Now, I don't think it's going to drop the market or anything, but it's definitely going to bring the price back to uh, realistic asking prices. You know, when you, see, when you see those stats, okay, and you see uh, so many units didn't sell, da, 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 you know, 50% of units on MLS don't sell anyways. It's no big deal. And the, the only one reason they don't sell is because the price is too high. There's no other reason, okay? The price is too high, the price is too high, the price is too high. Now, assignments, you don't get MLS. Sometimes you do, but usually you don't. Um, so now you really have to price properly because if you don't price properly, and people are going to say, what? This guy wants like $1,400 for the assignment uh, a foot. Well, I can buy next door new for 13 or 12 or, or another guy. So you gotta, you, you got to be reasonable about the pricing. you got to be reasonable what you ask as an assignment seller. And of course, as an assignment buyer, you got to be uh, careful, number one, that that's their assignment, that all the dots, the I's, the T's, all good. Check the incentive, check the closing caps, check the fees, check everything you need. And do your homework. It's not that complicated. It's really it's the same process you would have done if you bought it from developer. You know, it's, it's still the same unit. Okay. So remember these things. Remember the deposit. Remember to check the assignments actually belongs to the person who sells the assi the assigned them. And remember to check if it was a foreign buyer 35 or it's a local buyer 15 and 5. So that's a big difference to your deposit. And of course, ask me to negotiate for you the best deal possible. If you're selling. We're going to ask for the best price possible and the most money possible. And of course, make sure that the seller is legit, the buyer is legit and can, and can complete the deal by way of checking their mortgage uh, ability. And if you're buying, do the reverse, you know, check that the unit is good, check all the numbers are good, try to pay the lowest price possible and, uh, and the best deposit possible for you. That's it.